Alright, so she did two months. Paper coming from the tent flap. It's a cat with something in its mouth. Suddenly I'm awake. It has the journal. It disappeared into the night. Okay. Running at full speed. This is familiar. I know. I read this in the journal. Something similar happened to the previous assistant. Yes, it did. Yet here I am, falling into the same trap. I must be crazy. Slow to stop. I think I'm going to be sick. I realize this course is close to the danger zone. Everything goes black and I fall to the ground. I open my eyes. A calico cat, one that I scanned yesterday, is standing in front of me. She drops the journal from her mouth. I pass out. Oh, so dramatic. Alright. 
let's get back way back to our lovely cats all right the sphinx cat is standing over me staring as i open my eyes actually let's mark this All right, welcome to Perfect Date. So far, we've had the same, uh, same thing going on as last time. Taking a picture, just tweet out. A little battery, sure. Sphinx cat is standing over me, staring as I open my eyes. Yes, definitely bitten. Look at its head. Damn it, I got bitten again! What is this? I can make just several deep scratches and puncture marks. Okay, sure. The cats watch me intensely. Great. Is this real? I read something in the journal about a kidnapping. Kidnapping. <laughs> We're sorry, it was the only way. You, you stole the journal. Oh, but I gave it back to you. But why did you take it to lure you out here, sucker? Damn, that is harsh, Kibbles. My head has begun to clear and I realize that if I can talk to these cats, not only is it all true, but it's already too late. I have the sickness. Uh, we need to have a talk, human. No, we don't. I know what's that going on here. I read all about it from your last victim. Oh, now, Kara, that's not very nice. We prefer to think of you as our champion and friend. McMurphy, you silver-tongued Irish charmer. My reputation goes before me. Oh, I know who you all are from the journal, so let's cut to the chase here. We just did that, dummy. You know what I mean. What happens now? Keep reading the notes. Oh, this is me! This is Chunkers! Here he is! From chapter one! Keep reading the notes. That will tell you all we know so far. Hang on, who, who are you? You're not mentioned in the journal. You figure it out. It's not my problem anymore. Oh. Very interesting, Chungers. Oh, don't worry about them. They're preoccupied elsewhere. 
So what do you say? Are you going to help us or not? I mean, we gotta help, right? We helped last time. Gotta help again. I'm assuming that the whole point of this game is for us to uh, find the antidotes. We didn't get very far. Thanks for all of us. Okay. Okay, I make it back to the lab fairly quickly. Considering how little sleep I've had, I wonder if that's one of the effects of a feline transition. I imagine my agility levels will change. I'm strangely excited about getting to work on the antidote. It's the sort of challenge I love. Hmm. I'm just about to enter the lab to begin my legitimate work when the catalog beeps a message without any contact information. All right, unknown number again. All right, let's see. Ominous! I don't have time to work. I don't know why it auto-advanced. I didn't even get to read the message, but okay, sure, whatever. All right, the professor's here. Chungers is out in the wild. R.I.P. Chungers. Let's... All right, so we have 16.7% of the antidote. That's like nothing. Oh, we got a new research, though. Feline hairstylist. All right, so we're going to groom some cat kitties. Some gatitos. Put on my latex gloves and gather my tools. Brush, scissors, swabs, kitty wipes. I can't help but think I've forgotten something. Ah, of course. Treats. What is this song? Wow. This is, uh really indoctrinating into the cat life. I leave the tent and head for the lab, stopping to stroke a few of the island's residents on the way. Meow, meow, meow. Why am I looking like a cat already? It's only been one day! I call out to the lazing subjects as I enter the lab. Looky, looky, what have I got? I shake the bag of treats, and the small lab erupts with hungry meows. If you want these, you'll have to behave, okay? I open the first crate, home of the grouchy old Mr. Bumble, and I gently lift him onto the counter to be groomed. Morning, Grumpy. Let me check your ears. No debris? Lovely. I have a feeling you may be discharged in the next day or two. He was brought in with a mild infection, but it seems to have recovered well. I give Mr. Bumble a cheeky cuddle before I begin to brush his matted fur. Wow, where does it all come from? There's enough fur to make another cat. Mr. Bumble is beginning to get agitated. I know, I know, it's very annoying. Just got to trim you up a bit, then you can get back to sleep. He res resignedly lets me cut some of the hair around his bum and the back of his hind legs. Interesting. Uh, then we put him back in his crate. Socks is the next one. Little white cat. He's a lot more lively than old Bumble. So, we're gonna lock him down? No. Oh, hello, what's this? I noticed a little red patch just under his chin. Oh no, we don't have boat flies, do we? Bot flies? Ouch. Soxon struggle away from me. He must be in quite a lot of discomfort. Stroke the little cat trying to calm him down. I hate using sedatives on subjects unless absolutely necessary. After a while, I'm able to get a better look at the wound. There doesn't seem to be anything living under here. I'm relieved I don't have to deal with any bot flies. Hmm, it looks strange. It's like a rash or sore, but I'm not sure how or where. Oh. So should I just clean it with saline solution and let the air get to it? Or should I put some of the professor's soothing cream 116 and wrap it in gauze? Uh... Saline? Should be clean with no need for anything stronger. I'll reassess the need for cream. Okay. He squirms a little. It's not very comfortable. Okay. So we clean his little chin wound. That's it. Alright, great. Oh, great. We got uh, 
Research 6. And I hit the heart. I don't know if that actually does anything. The tutorial said it did. But I'm not sure I believe it. Recon? Do we have any new recons? Recon 2 and Recon 7 we have. Okay. So let's do 2. Trixie has been telling me about a strange phenomenon in a nearby rock pool. Let's go. I've taken some time off today so that Trixie can show me the water pools she's been telling me about. I have some sample bottles, a little food, and a blanket. Humi. <laughs> Alright, they don't appear to be humi. They are. Well, we can't prove that until we've tested them. Reflection, refraction, and dispersion can play some fancy tricks on the eye. Poo to your testing. You take all the magic away, science person. It makes your world very dull, I think. Maybe you're right, Trixie. Let's wait and see what wonders you are going to show me, eh? That's right, this way! She's disappeared from sight. I run to the cliffside where she was walking and looking over the edge, I can see she's jumped to a small rock shelf about four meters down from where I'm stood. Come, you can do it. Don't be a fraidy cat. I'm more concerned about how we'll get back up again, actually. They are kind of steps further along, but this way is closer to the entrance. Not wanting to appear too much of a killjoy, I clamber over the edge and lower myself down, dropping the last few feet. Impressive! You're getting a feline spring in your step. Hmm, if you say so. I'm worried I may have twisted my ankle, but I don't want to say anything. Follow me, springy! She's disappeared again. It's like keeping up with a jackrabbit. Follow my voice! And suddenly an alarming sound is coming from between two rock faces. It's high-pitched screeching and very loud. I squeeze through the crevice and am in what looks like a cave without a ceiling. Tricks! Stop! The sound is so amplified in this enclosure it has become deafening. Sorry, Humie, but it feels so good. Have a try! What? Yell! Shout! Scream! Sing! At the top of your voice, loud as you can! Oh, um, really? I feel self-conscious. You only live once, and it's so fabulous! She makes the noise again, and this time I join in. It's fantastic. The acoustics are something else. It's like an amphitheater. Eventually we run a seam and I flop on the ground. Exhaust after we catch our breath. I'm ready to push onwards. We'd better get on if we don't want to be back too late. We're here! I'm surprised. I was expecting something more impressive, I suppose. This is the place. I look around for the first time and notice several small pools of water, not much larger than puddles, around the edges of the enclosure. Oh, I see. I bend down next to the nearest pool and see straight away that it is the deepest red. It looks like blood. Look at mine. Like liquid sky. I cross to the opposite side where Trixie is sitting, and sure enough, there is the clearest, richest blue water and melted emeralds. Again, I follow her to another pool. It's green as spring foliage. foliage. Then another of deepest purple, one of orange, yellow, pink. Well, it certainly is as amazing as you said, Trix. How strange that they are all so different. What's causing it? it? Has to be a trick of the light. Put your hand in. Well, I'm not sure it's a good idea. There could be any number of bacteria making this happen. Best not to touch until we're sure it's safe. I've done it lots! It's fine! Aw, oh, Trixie's so excited. I glance over, and sure enough, she has her furry little paws in the golden colored water. Somewhat reassured, I scoop some of the blue water up and sniff it. it. Smells wonderful, as though it has been perfumed. What is that smell? It's weirdly familiar. I take out my bottles and begin collecting the waters. And my theory about the light is blown when I line the little bottles up together and they retain their original hue. Something is dying this water. I can't wait to get back to the lab and run some tests. We can go back the easy way if you like. Follow me! We head back along the rock shelf and go past the spot we jumped down on the way here. Further along there is an ascent, just as Trixie had said, but I would hardly call it steps. Someone has clearly tried to make a trail here, but it's all a bit rough and ready. Further along still, I can make out a large empty metal drum. It's rusted, obviously discarded some time ago. I get a closer look to see that there is a tap near the base and the remains of a label, but I can barely make out the words. I take a picture of it with my catalog to decipher later. The perfume I smelled in the cave seems to be stronger here. I'm very intrigued. 
Trixie couldn't be less interested in all this. She's happily skipping ahead looking for a good picnic spot for us. I will have to be patient with my investigation. All right. Very interesting. So some perfumed colored water. Let's do research six. With the professor. Follicle miracle. Oh God, is it hair regrowth? My stomach is queasy. I don't want it strange to be um, used to treating subjects with medication injections, but something doesn't feel right. Oh, I look at the syringe in my hand. I turn to the professor. What are we testing for with these meds again? He looks up from his desk. Is there a problem, Brooke? I've already told you, it's supposed to stimulate hair growth. Why do we need to stimulate hair growth? Why indeed? However, ours is not to question why, Brooke. The likes of you and I perform the tests set out by the people who pay our wages. Such is life, eh? Maybe the professor's Canadian. I don't know. I look back at the little cat, Smokey, Oh, we felt we jexmoy squeals and returns to his cage. How long does this usually take? The professor looks up again, slightly irritated. I don't know, Brooke, but you're being paid to find that out, aren't you, my dear? Ooh, damn, that is sassy as shit. I make a note of the time and observe the cat. After five minutes, there's no noticeable change. Ten minutes, still no half an hour. Hair looks a little different. One hour in, and the hair is visibly longer and seems to continue growing. Okay. I decide to take a tea break. Smokey seems content to nap. Can I get you a cup of tea, Professor? Oh, no. I don't know how you can tolerate the foul stuff they brew up in the mess tent. I have my thermos of coffee here. Thank you. Fair enough. I'll be back in a bit. Oh, my God. If we come back, Smokey's a fluffball. And so, you know, the drama taking place in Smokey's cage. I find it hard to stifle a laugh. Oh, my goodness, Professor. Have you seen this? Professor looks up, exasperated by another interruption, but then notices the cage. Oh dear! Well, don't just stand there, Brooke. Get him out! I open the front of the cage and pull out the large hairball that Smokey has turned into. His fur tumbles over my arm as I cradle the bewildered cat. Well, I never! Very interesting, isn't it, Brooke? Uh, I think it's still growing, Professor. I do believe you're right. Perhaps we should consider the clippers. All right. So we're for 15 minutes. Damn, we're shaving this cat. My, that's a lot of hair. Just a small amount for testing and put the rest of it out the back. Mora can dispose of it later. Mora? Mrs. Marigold. Excellent work today, Brooke. Most interesting findings. I mean, what did we do? We didn't do nothing. We just injected this poor cat, left him to grow a ass ton of fur, and then shaved him down. Ugh, I don't like that one bit. Oh, we're supposed to rest, I think. Okay, it's at everything I need. Mom's recipe, what are we making? Granola. Why is our time-honored family heirloom recipe freaking granola of all things all right so we're making granola great it's delicious how wonderful don't know why we're supposed to take a nap Brooke no you had to make granola all right let's switch it up a little romance who can we romance this time McMurphy's out <gasps> snooty booty is back in the picture fluffy butt all right, uh, since we couldn't do Snooty Booty last time, because we picked McMurphy, I'm gonna pick Snooty Booty. That awful hairless thing. Cool sea washed over my feet and legs as I lay on the sand. I hear a long, loud sigh coming from somewhere nearby and I sit up to see where it came from. Snooty Booty in repose, under the shade of a palm tree, is looking about her with a concerned expression. One that I've never really seen a cat make before. I go over to see if I can help her with something. Are you okay, Snooty Booty? She lets out a lo another long, wistful sigh. 
To be quite frank with you, human, no, I am not okay. I cannot expose this delicate skin of mine to the sun, but there is something I need to retrieve from further down the beach. It is quite the predicament. Oh, right, you want me to fetch it for you? Oh, would you really be so kind, human? I would be very grateful. Sure, it's no problem. We can't have you putting that delicate skin of yours at risk. Indeed not. Skin care must come above all else, don't you know? One must never expose one's skin to the elements, human. It really is quite aging. One must also never get stressed if one wishes to retain one's youthful aura, which is rather difficult on this frightful island. Oh, I know, believe me. How do you know? Are you stressed? Oh no, that would upset me terribly. Really? That's sweet of you. Of course, you are really a precious thing. I do so hope you are finding your time here pleasant. Don't worry about me, snooty booty. I'm fine now. Now, what it's like you would like me to get? But well, before I tell you, I must ask you don't inform the others of the whereabouts of this particular item. It's very dear to me, you see, and one of the few luxuries I have all to myself. Of course, that's no problem. I can be discreet when I need to be. I do hope so, human. You see, along the beach just south of here, there is a tree which bears the ripest of coconuts all year round. It is quite splendid. The coconuts are always so sweet and creamy. Snooty Booty looks as if she's lost in a wonderful dream. I like to drink coconut water as often as I can as it is so good for the skin and waistline. But the less civilized denizens of the island keep knocking the coconuts down before they're fully matured. Fortunately, no one else seems to have discovered this particular tree yet. All right, so we're going off to the tree. And we get there. We carry as many as we can back to her ladyship. Well, it was a long ass way away, so we're real tired. Here you go, Boots. She eyes the pile with a distinct air of approval. I only need one coconut, human. Oh, these are far too many. Well, I do apologize, madame. Tell me you didn't plunder the tree. No, there were plenty on the ground already, so... Oh, well, that's a small mercy. At least you didn't hack them down. Hack them down with what? Well, your hands are rather large and leathery. Snooty booty, I do not use my hands for deforestation. Well, I'm sure you did your very best, although I really don't know what I'm going to do with so many coconuts. You're welcome, I'm sure. <laughs> How strange it is that there are no creatures on the island to plunder them. What do you think it is, Snoots, that keeps wildlife away from the island? Do you mean the magnetic barrier? Magnetic barrier? Oh, do keep up, human. I thought you were meant to be a scientist. I realize she must be referring to the force field that surrounds the island. Now, be a dear and crack one open for me with my enormous hands. Well, you could try, I suppose. On second thought, I'll be right back with a screwdriver. A what? Snooty Booty looks horrified. And it's a sharp metal tool that bores into things. What on earth do you need one of those for? So that I can make a hole to get the water out of the coconut? How else would you propose I do it? Well, look around you, dear. Look at nature's bounties. What about that? Snooty gestures a limp paw at a shard of rock nearby. Snoots, how do you usually get the water out of the coconut when there isn't a human around? Well, the exuberant kibble simply loves to break things. Had you not noticed? It's one of the few reasons I tolerate him, don't you know? Far better than one of your screw dribblers, don't you think? Hmm. I reach over and pick up the rack. It does look like it could actually do the job. Okay, here it goes. Holding the coconut in a palm leaf, I gently tap the shell a few times with the stone before finally whacking it. It cracks open surprisingly easily, or easily the water drains onto the leaf. There now, see how nature provides, human. 
Yep, again, you're welcome. Quite. Snooty Bitty stretches her neck and then the upper body towards the leaf. She sticks her tongue out as far as it can go before raising her big eyes to me. I can't quite seem to. I suddenly realize what she's getting at. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> this is awful cat is just laying there trying to lick it without moving. So we can either feed her, which I suppose is the romantic thing to do and we are doing romance, or we can tell her to get up, which is honestly what I would do, personally. I would be like, get off your lazy ass and come get this coconut water. So let's do that. This little princess is far too spoiled. Is there something the matter, Snoots? Well, you've placed my libation slightly out of my reach. Oh dear, and you're so thirsty. Damn, bro, that's some shade. It's so shady. Uh, yes, that clearly is the predicament. So what are you going to do about it then? I beg your pardon. Well, it seems you're here and your drink is all the way over there. However, are you going to quench your thirst? Are you speaking in riddles? Not really. More like parables. Oh boy. Snooty is no time for this nonsense. She scoots awkwardly on her stomach until she gets within reach of the palm leaf and delicately laps at it. That looks delicious. Mm-hmm. Snooty agrees without taking a break. You know, searching for those coconuts was thirsty work. I'm sure it was. She's still lapping at the water. <coughs> throat's a bit scratchy, especially in the seat. Snooty Booty finally comes up for air. Quite. That's the beauty of the coconut, you see. So hydrating, and most palatable, too. You really ought to try it sometime. Alright, this bitch drank all of it. Yeah, that's a good idea, Boots. And the very best thing after drinking coconut water is to curl up and have a nap, you know. Beauty sleep is most important. Oh, is that so? Indeed, human. I suppose you have other things to do now? Uh, well... Snooty Booty yawns and closes her eyes. I suppose I do. Sweet dreams, princess. She snores softly in reply. Wow, we really picked a winner with Snooty Booty here. Jeez, Louise. Can't even get up to drink her own coconut water that we had to go schlep halfway across the island for. Alright, let's recon this. So we can do recon 7. Snoots has brought me something intriguing. I better check it out. Oh yeah, analyzing products. Sounds like my day job. Brooke, are you still sleeping? You really ought to be awake by now. Snooty Booty, are you okay? What are you doing in my tent? All this lazing about is very bad for your complexion, to say nothing about the dragging effects on the delicate tissue around the eyes. Is there something I can help you with? Possibly. I have something I want you to look at. Right now, what time is it? Time you were active. Come along. Well, at least let me get ready. I'm very well. Snooty Bitty sits down and starts screaming herself. After a moment, she looks up again. Why aren't you ready yet? Um, can you leave the tent so I can get dressed? For goodness sake. Snooty Bitty rolls her eyes and walks out. I get dressed resignedly and follow her. Where are we going today, Snoots? What do you what do you think it is? I'm intrigued. We're on the bitch staring at a particularly buried a partially buried bottle sealed inside a plastic bag. It looks as though it has only recently washed up. Well, there's only one way to find out. I pull the bottle of the sand, some kind of document. What is that thing? Read it to me. It's a good thing I'm just as curious as Snooty, or I would be feeling a lot more irritable by now. I carefully unseal the bag and unfold the paper. I read the note out loud. Moderate sphere sun includes increased hair growth and marked mood. Subjects 1 through 5 had major complications, tumors, partial blindness, memory loss. Starting to read like a, uh, a thing. They look younger. Uh, so you're quite right, Brooke. We ought not to trust it. That note could have been written by anyone. We shall conduct our own experiment. Apply the cream to my skin. Have you lost your mind, Snooty Booty? Did you not hear what I read out loud? Tumors? Blindness? Memory loss? 
Statistics bore me. You should know that by now. Let's live a little. I'm willing to take the risk in the name of science. No, we're not taking any risks, Snooty Booty. You wait here while I go and get my kit bag from the lab. Let's see if we can't work out what this stuff is made of. It's probably uranium. I was hoping the lab would be free, but the professor is here making some notes. I just wanted to check something. Okay, so we can either take it without him noticing. He's gonna notice. So let's make up some other reason. Right? Like that. Uh, I have to make this believable, but also invite no other questions. Samples are fecal. Fecal? Yes, a large poo, sir. It has rather interesting properties. Jolly good. Off you go, then. No, that's not the voice for him. I can't remember what the voice is anymore. As I approach the beach, it becomes clear Snooty Booty has managed to break into the ointment. She appears to have spilled some and is now busy rolling around in it. You idiot cat. The only danger here is the ghastly sand sticking to my delicate skin. Do help me get rid of it, Brooke. I tried to wipe the sand off, but it's stuck like glue. Underneath the layer of sand, I can see her skin is very pink. There's no time to lose. Pick her up and run to the ocean, trying to use the seawater to clean off as much of the ointment as I can. Put me down! What on earth? I've never been so humiliated in my life. Now back to the samples. There's not much I can do here on the beach. So we gotta wait for the lab to be free. Professor's gone. We're looking at the ointment, all right. 30% of the ointment is cat saliva. Weird. Oh, if they are using saliva from the cats on the island, they could be infecting all their test subjects with catification. But where have all these other side effects come from? I run the ointment again, this time looking for known pharmaceuticals. Before I get the test results back, Snooty Booty comes trotting in. I just thought you should know that the security guard is coming this way. You should make yourself scarce before he arrives. Not that I care what happens to you after you threw me into the ocean. Alright. So we cleaned up real quick ran away before Zane got there. Now we're back. Do we have any new recons? Probably not. No new recons. Okay. And we know if we do the list research, we leave the islands. All that's left is to romance. Yep, so it does look like once you start dating one cat, you cannot date the other, which makes sense. Let's go snoots. Snooty booty snoots. So we're looking all over for Snooty Booty. Poke at her gently to rouse her. Something for you, a gift as it happens. Oh human, it's you. Whatever are you doing up and about at this time? It's midday boots. Snooty stares at me uncomprehendingly. I have an hour for lunch and I came to spend it with you. But if that's not a convenient time, I can always find something else to do. Wait, you mentioned a gift. Well, yes, I suppose I had the idea when we were drinking. Well, when you were drinking from the coconut I fetched for you the other day. I took some of the remaining coconuts over to the lab and cooked up some coconut oil. Snooty Booty opens her mouth wide. I sit awkwardly, staring at her, unsure exactly what she's doing. Well... I'm ready to break my fast, human. It's hard sometimes to know whether to laugh or spit at this spoiled feline. No, Boots, this isn't for eating. You mentioned how good drinking coconut water is for you, so I thought you might like some coconut oil to rub onto your skin. Keep you moisturized and youthful? Aren't you terribly clever? You may begin. <laughs> she lolls on her back, exposing her plump pink tummy to me. Oh, you want me to rub it in for you? Snooty Booty simply smiles in response. Well, a please wouldn't go amiss. Yes, well, I didn't want to make a fuss, but I would prefer it if you asked first. Alright. She and I are going to have a little chat about etiquette. Please, may I rub this coconut oil onto your skin? Yes, you may. 
I pour some of the pungent liquid into the palm of my hand and rub it together with the other. I have no idea what I'm doing, as I've never massaged anyone before. But I work along the lines of putting sun, sun cream on a friend. As I touch the warm, loose skin on Snooty's primordial pouch, I'm struck by how delicate she really is. And I try to be as gentle as possible. Is that okay? You're very skillful with your hands, human. Uh, okay. I do so wish I had those thumb things. They seem so useful. They're quite handy, to be honest, but paws are cool, too. Hmm. Snooty Booty lazily inspects one of her paws. Do my paws next, will you? Snooty Skin is reacting well to the treatment and has become shiny and pliant. I see the good it's doing. I move on to massage her paws, but I'm quite taken aback by the length of her claws. Oh, my boots. Your claws are really quite long. Don't you use a scratch post or anything? A what? You know, something abrasive to file them on. Whatever for? Well, it's part of being a cat, really. Stops them catching on things? Snooty Booty is peering at me with one judgmental eye open. Caught on what, exactly? Oh, I don't know, Snoots. Don't worry about it. I'm sure it's fine. Oh, no. Do go on. I'm intrigued. You seem seem to imply that there is a degree of neglect in my grooming. No, I most certainly am not. You are by far the most high maintenance, uh, I mean, highly groomed cat I've ever seen. In fact, you are the perfect example of a sphinx. I may what? Sphinx? She's trying to get me to say perfect again. It's hard to keep my face straight. Absolutely perfect, Snoots. And you're an expert. Well, I wouldn't call myself that, but I've been reading up on Sphinx Cats, and you have all the characteristics of a pedigree. It's very sweet of you to say so. Remind me, what would those be? I hesitate for a moment, trying to remember what pause for thought listed as the top features to look for. Okay. So we're going to flatter her, be accurate. Um... There was a rather a lot of info, and I want to give her the best bits. So we'll flatter her. Well, let's see. I have a feeling Snooty Booty would not appreciate some of the common qualities of a sphinx, including wrinkles and pot bellies, so I decided to cherry pick. Sphinx cats are well known for their beautiful big eyes and high prominent cheekbones. Snooty Booty extends her neck and widens her eyes. She also appears to suck in her cheeks, which gives her the look of someone who's not wearing their dentures. <laughs> She's now extended her entire body into a look like, I see, go on. Their skin is soft, buttery, sort of true because they don't have fur to soak up excess oil. Sphinx cats can become quite greasy. <laughs> uh, I'm listening and uh, they're very regal. Regal? I'm not sure where that word came from, but Snooty Booty seems to enjoy it. Well, human, you seem to have vast and accurate knowledge of my kind. I'm rather impressed with you. Thank you, Snoots, which prompts me to take what you are saying about my claws far more seriously. Do you think I ought to tend to them? In what way? The length. I believe you are suggesting they ought to be trimmed. I wasn't saying that, but I don't think it's such a bad idea. Perhaps I could help you with that. Manicure, what a marvelous idea. Let's say tomorrow, same time. Well, if I can get away, I feel like she's played me. You really are most kind. Thank you, human. Apparently, we like being treated that way. Brooke is weak. I do not like the playing this character at all. Ugh, snooty booty sucks. Alright, 25% of the antidote. That means our girl is also going to turn into a cat. Unsurprisingly. Right? Because, I mean, that's the whole point, is that we all turn into cats, and then the final person, I assume, finds the antidote. And then, uh... You know, we, I guess, change everybody back into humans? Alright, what are we giving Snoots this time? A uh, piece of core stone. Oh, we're gonna file her nails. Okay. 
and oh nail polish very interesting it's called desire why do we have such a crush on this cat this cat who treats us like garbage so snooty such a princess doesn't say please or thank you demands we wait on her hand and foot this is not the cat for me uh irish cat was much more my my speed like he just wanted to get drunk all the time and like have adventures i'm all about the irish cat mcmurphy fuck you snooty booty do not like you all right so we gave her a manicure whoa interesting oh my i am spectacular she extends her clothes momentarily presses them into my arms not enough to puncture the skin but if i tried to move it would hurt lethal weapons indeed pose for the camera oh goodness i hadn't realized this was going to be a photographic session also how exciting Why do we have to take off the thing? Can't leave it on you. It would impede the natural retraction. Oh. I shall leave them extended. You can't do that. I beg your pardon. I thought for a moment I heard you tell me what I can't do. Surely I was mistaken. But damn. Oh, we're removing it. All right, she's very upset with us, but whatever. Sometimes you gotta put your foot down. But it looks so fabulous. Why? Uh, well, that's what the. All right. Whoa! She takes a swipe at us. Wow. Wow, we just called her a narcissist. I um, just need to do what's best for your welfare. I couldn't sleep if I didn't do the right thing. Well, you, we can't have you losing your beauty sleep now, can we? Heaven knows you could use some. Oh, the shade. She holds out a limp-wristed paw and looks in the opposite direction. I remove the color in silence. It was quick and easy. Well, I shall see you at supper time, I suppose. Uh, we hurt our friendship with her. So sad. Because we didn't kiss her ass. Wah, wah, wah. I do not think this is going to have a romantic ending like I did with McMurphy. So easy with McMurphy. Snooty booty is a butthead. Be a dear, would you? Oh, do you know? That reminds me. I have something for you. Something for me? I'm also surprised. Well, I'll have you know, I think of you a great deal. You are my, my most faithful subject, don't you know? Now, if you want your gift, carry me further down the beach, and I'll show you where I hid it. Oh, we gotta walk her? Ugh. I buried it. I suppose you want me to dig it up then, eh? Ha, oh, you always know what to say to make me laugh, human. It's quite a talent, I tell you. We wouldn't want sand getting into it, would we, dear? I carefully open the flimsy silk bundle and turn the contents over. It's a little black tub with a plain label stuck to it that reads Skin Cream P103. Do you love it? Um, what is it? Oh dear, can you not read? Yes, it says skin cream, but I don't know exactly what that entails. Oh, you see, one massages skin cream into one's skin. Yes, I understand that, Boots, but whose is this? Where did you find it? Well, it's yours now, human. I roll my eyes and further inspect the tub. It's small, plain. It's full to the brim with goop. It smells disgu it's disgusting like bin juice or something. <laughs> it smells like trash juice. Ah! Uh All right, so, uh, still trying to convince us to put it on. Only snoot, Snoot's nose. 
Let us take a moment to ponder how my generosity in giving you a thoughtful gift has developed into you interrogating me in such a brutish manner. Did you take this thing from the lab? Oh no, not at all. Thank goodness. I took it from the stockpile behind the lab, where the fire pits are. You mean the incinerators? <laughs> oh my god, it's from the toxic waste bins. It really is some kind of beauty product. This makes no sense. Actually, princess. All right, so we're going to examine this cream. And she thinks we're still going to put us on it, put it on us. And we're telling her not to go use the cream in the in the bin, but of course she's like trying to be the only pretty one in here bitch and we're like no no snooty you're trash though you gotta stop using that trash cream all right let's do the final romance let's get rid of this snooty booty A weekly appointment to apply coconut oil. We get herbs for tonight's supper. And she encourages me to make good. I'm picking what I need when I notice the cat slink out of the back door of the cottage. Sweetie Booty, is that you? She stops and looks about furtively. What on earth are you doing crouching amongst the vegetation? Are you trying to conceal yourself? Because I must tell you, you are doing a poor job indeed. Of course not. Why would I be concealing myself in Miss, Mrs. Marigold's herb garden? I don't know, human. So much of your behavior baffles me. Perhaps you were spying on me. Why on earth would I do that? Unless, of course, you're up to something. I'm joking, but I notice that the swing scat has turned a brighter shade of her usual pink. Are you up to something, Snooty? Really? I have no idea what grounds you think you have to accuse me. But I refuse to stand here being interrogated for a moment longer. Good. Bye. She spun around and making off in a lick. Suits, wait, I was only teasing. What's gotten into you? And there you go again with your probing and questioning. Oh dear, we seem to have gotten off on the wrong foot today. Let's start again, shall we? Hello, Snooty Booty. How lovely to see you. She looks a bit blustered, but stopped running. Good afternoon, Brooke. I apologize for my impetuous reaction, but I was feeling rather stalked. I appreciate that it cannot be comfortable for you to be cast aside, but I would hope that we can all behave in a civilized manner. Cast aside? Quite. Because you didn't turn up for your massage? Well, actually, for the sake of accuracy, I did turn up for my massage. But not with you. It takes a moment for me to work out what she means. Someone else massaged you? Try not to upset yourself. There's no need for a scene. Who? Is that important? Yes, it is. I can't imagine anyone else would. Care for me? Is that what you were going to say? Actually, I was trying to work out how. Without thumbs, it wouldn't be easy. Not a cat! Don't be ridiculous! The very thought of a feline trying to negotiate coconut oil. Coconut oil. Really, Brooke? So who? Then I realized that Snoots came out of the Marigolds. Yeah, no duh. Well, well, Miss Booty, have you wrapped yourself around a certain caretaker? Try not to be too disappointed. You're very sweet and very willing, which is always a boon. But the clue is in the title, caretaker. There's a level of commitment required to care for a sphinx properly. You did the best you could, but you are always going to be distracted by work. Well, and Mr. Marigold is less distracted? Well, he certainly is more willing to indulge me. I think he rather enjoys my more challenging requirements. Whereas I try to change you. You did your best. It was a rather valiant effort. No one can take that away from you. Well, I shall take that as a compliment. He dotes on me, you know. No more than you deserve. How kind of you to say. I wish you every happiness, snooty booty. And I, but more importantly, yes? The oil. I believe you have a fresh bottle. 
If you could just pop it back there on the doorstep, Mr. M will get to it later. I can't help but laugh at her audacity as I watch her sashay off. I feel a little sad that I won't be her most loyal servant anymore. Good fucking riddance, snooty booty. Good riddance. Ah, oh, that was the worst cat. Let's rest up. Check to see if we have a new recon. But my friend isn't there. Instead, there's a giant cat. Oh, here we go. Looks like an elder. It bares its teeth at me and lets out a menacing low growl just as I'm about to scream the tutor arrives. But it's Professor Popper. You look like you've seen a ghost, Brooke. I'm trying to answer back to tell him to look behind me, but the words won't come out. I'm rigid with fear. Can't move. Can't speak. Can't scream. Everyone else is acting like things are normal. Can't they see it? I force myself to turn again and look at the terrifying cat, but it's not there. There's just an ordinary domestic cat, and everyone is laughing at me. Now I see everyone from the island. The marigolds, Joe, Bob, Zane, Pauper, all pointing and laughing. I jump out of my seat to leave, and I'm in bed, in my tent, sat bolt upright. I shouldn't have eaten cheese so close to bedtime. Oh no, we turning. That's it. We have to end. Recon. Recon 16. Oh yeah, it's the toxic skin cream that Snooty gave us and tried to make us wear. She keeps finding experimental cosmetics. I decide to run some tests on it. Snooty Booty developed some nasty welts after using this cream. I want to see what it's made from. I have a feeling this is not something the professor would want me to poke around in. I'm quickly able to identify a number of common natural skincare ingredients like shea butter and chamomile. There are some other components that I can't immediately identify. I check for cat saliva. Maybe we're looking at the same kind of product as the stuff Snooty found washed up on the beach, but no match. I run the sample through the database of organic compounds. As I suspected, the, cat, the cream uses other cat-based ingredients. This time it looks like cat urine is being used. I'd better not share that little discovery with Snooty Booty. I decide to check for any clues out by the incinerators. Maybe I can find out a little more about where these things are coming from. At the back of the tent area are a couple of large pits that are for the disposal of harmful waste from the lab. There's nothing incinerating right now, so I can dig around a little in the smoldering ashes. I'm tentatively moving debris about with a stick. So far, it seems like just soot cinders. And suddenly, the silence is disrupted by the sound of someone entering the lab. I make myself scarce by crawling around the far side of a nearby bush. As luck would have it, I happen to end up to have ended up at an ideal vantage point to be able to see into the lab through a gap in the canvas. Oh, there's the gap in the canvas. Two men enter with a large crate. I recognize them as the ferryman and his son. Professor Popper is with them. He directs them to place the crate on the worktop. The professor reaches in and brings out a small tub that looks identical to the one Snooty Booty found. My guess is that this is the next batch in for testing. The professor stops what he's doing abruptly and looks at his catalog. I presume he's receiving a phone call. He dismisses the two men with a wave of his hand. As soon as they're gone, he turns his attention to the catalog. He looks anxious as he speaks. Yes, they've been delivered. I shall make a start first thing tomorrow morning. Yes, madam. I certainly will, madam. With all due respect, I do understand the urgency, but I'm sure you understand the need for thoroughness. I can assure you it will be ready for the deadline. Testing on sample 104 is far more is going far more smoothly than 103. The improvements are whatever, long silence. It's very important to cross-check it with data here. The island itself has a significant effect on the samples. We still have some tests left to do. We are making progress, of course. I shall let you know straight away. The call ends abruptly. Presumably, Madame cut him off. He looks angrier than I've ever seen him. He marches out of the lab and heads off in the direction of his tent. I sneak away from the bushes and head back to my own tent. I continue. I can continue with my investigations another time. No, you can't, Brooke. You can't. It's over. Your time on the island is over. You had the cat dream. You gonna turn into a, a cat, just like uh, Chauncey or Chopper? <sighs> yes, I did it all. All I could possibly could. Research 9. 
hair for the cat hair. I'm worried about socks. None of the treatments so far seem to be clearing up his wound. Oh, this is the one with the wound on his thing. Uh, but after a few days, the sight got too sore to even touch the soft cotton bed. I'm not seeing any positive results. I just sw decide to swallow my doubts and use cream 116. I'm worried that I should have stuck with my gut feeling and not used the cream because now it's even worse. And I'm exhausted of my options. I decide to ask the professor for his advice. Sorry to disturb you, sir, but I need to your advice on socks. Send pick, please. I snap a pic a picture of my catalog and send it to the professor. Yes, that does look nasty. Have you tried Cream 116? Stage 1 protocol was used first, cleaning out saline solution, etc., but I've tried the cream since, still inflamed. Persevere with cream. Takes a while, but will pay off. I feel doubtful, but resign myself to the professor's seniority. If unsatisfied, try steroid formula in fridge. Red bag. I rummage around in the fridge until I find the red bag with a box of vitamin supplements. Got it. Thank you for your help, sir. I pour the milk into a small bowl, and relieved to see that Suck seems to like it. I sit with him as he laps it up, and keep an eye on him for a while. After about an hour, I'm satisfied that he's sleeping happily, and all his vital stats are normal. I've left my packed bag on the end of the jetty and have 10 minutes to find Snooty Booty to say my goodbyes. I have a pretty good idea where she'll be this time of day and I head to the shady spot of sand beneath the palm trees. Are you asleep? She doesn't stir. I wanted to say goodbye. I'm going to miss you. No response. And I have a small gift for you. A slight stirring. It's not much. A little token, really, but I thought I could rub some onto your skin for you one last time. What?! After that, maybe you can persuade the new assistant to help you with it once you get to know them. Just leave it there. I can't be bothered with it right now. The new one will do it later. We're already firm friends. I know she's fibbing, but I respect the way she wants this, wants to play this out. Goodbye then, milady. It's been a real privilege. Yes, I dare say it has. Maybe I'll be back before the winter. I have so much information about the sickness and possible cure that I can't see it taking longer than a few months to make a successful antidote, especially with all the expertise on the mainland. It may only...